Well, I guess you could say today was kind of, well, I shouldn't say unproductive. It was marginally productive, but put in a uh, bunch of overtime at work this week, and it was a beautiful, I mean, beautiful day outside. It wasn't thinking much of it when I first woke up this morning because it was kind of overcast, but about an hour, hour later, sun came out, all the clouds went away. It was, shoot over 50 degrees out down here in the barn working nothing but a sweatshirt and i had my sleeves rolled up just gorgeous day didn't really feel like do i mean i obviously wanted to get outside and enjoy the day but didn't really want to because i worked my ass off this week just kind of wanted to take it nice and easy for once so went down to the field down the road here and cut some brush that had popped up in that fence row we cleaned up last for last winter that took about an hour or so, came back here and spent most of the rest of the day going through when my organized chaos over here and went through all my parts boxes and stuff and threw out a bunch of shit that I really didn't need to keep. Don't know why I kept it to begin with. Threw out a bunch of old belts I kept from the 525 because I mean, you take all that stuff off and you think, well, Heck, I'll throw it on the shelf. It's still got a little bit of life in it. Might get me out of a or might get me out of a bind at some point. And then the bind comes, and you don't go for your used parts. You get on the phone, or first thing you do is you get on the phone, start making phone calls, to get new parts, and you never end up reusing the stuff you keep around. So I, I just screw it. I don't need a bunch of old. I don't need a bunch of used stuff laying around unless it's good, like used stuff, like major parts. That, or stuff that I could tear apart, salvage parts off of. Like I parted out a steering or power steering cylinder, kept all the guts out of it, and odds and ends stuff like that. That stuff's worth keeping. But like I had a used thermostat sending or a temperature sending unit for the 1955, and a used key switch. That I mean, it worked, but it wasn't any good because the key wouldn't stay in it, and just random crap like that that didn't really need to stay around here. So got kind of made a halfway attempt with a little bit of space I got here to work with and got these bottom three shelves organized which may not look like much but that equates to about three hours of work four hours of work something like that I was down here for a while today swept the floor kind of organized this a little bit although it doesn't look like it threw a bunch of stuff out consolidated parts got rid of a bunch of boxes that didn't need to be there I never really got any good video of the little corner here, but if I had, you'd know that it looks quite a bit different. Spent, well, I had two 310 gasket sets, laying, well, partial gasket sets. I took those, consolidated them into one. While I was going through there, there was a bunch of them had good part numbers on them, so I took them up to the garage, brought my computer out, started looking the part numbers up in Edco Parts book and writing them down in a Word document so I know exactly what I got. Turns out some of the stuff that was in the 310 gasket set, not even, not even for a 310 motor, there's a bunch of fleet line stuff in there, so I segregated that on in its own bag. We got a bunch more gaskets in a big box over there on the shelf, but I'm not even going to attempt to go through those yet till I got better organizational space. So, and then got done with that and had to go to a viewing for a kid I grew up with who, well, we won't talk about that not something that needs to be talked about but I grew up with him and I wasn't gonna miss it so just got home from that not too long ago and I was gonna do it since I didn't really do anything worth taking video of today I was going to do a video on the Cubs since a bunch of people have been asking about them but got home and it's dark out and that barn ain't got no light so we're gonna push that one off to a later date but I did want to get a video up, so I figured come down here and who oh, we'll set you up right here. Uh, another question I get asked quite a bit is uh, where I buy my equipment from, because obviously you're not going to go to a dealership and find any of this stuff. Um. Craigslist, 
word of mouth, a lot of stuff, this stuff came from word of mouth, especially implements. Um, and auctions. Um, really the only thing we've ever got from a collector auction, and then by, you got collector auctions and then you got farm auctions, at least that's what I refer to them as. Collector auctions are like a collectors get either getting to the point where he's starting to downsize his collection, so he's selling off a bunch of stuff, or really the only one we have that came from a quote-unquote collector auction is a 66, and that came from Don King's auction back when he still had it in Columbia City, Indiana. And basically he was kind of like the antique farm equipment version of a tractor jockey. He just, through the whole year, he just compiled loads and loads and loads of tractors and parts and antique implements and stuff. And then every year he'd rent out the Whitley County Fairgrounds and just completely fill it. And that was that that auction was a good time. I wish they still had it, but auctions like that, things like eBay and Craigslist, they've kind of done away with them. And I don't think he's had that auction. And, well, last time we went to it, I was still I was still in grade school. I'm pretty sure last time we went to it, and it wasn't. It didn't live much longer after that. And you can kind of tell it was going by the wayside because in the last couple of years we went, it just kind of got a little smaller and a little smaller, which was a shame because that auction was fun. I mean, funner than hell. You'd go down there and it'd be kind of like going to something like Rantoul. You'd see the same group of guys every year and it just, it was a good time. But, um, most of the stuff that I've gotten at auctions has come from farm auctions. And just to clarify, because I had guys give me shit for, because they thought I was being some sort of big old hypocrite. When I say farm auction, I do not mean a farm liquidation. I mean an auction that's got a bunch of late model farm equipment at it. That's what I refer to as a farm auction. Just something that's farm equipment. Not antique farm equipment, just farm equipment in general. Consignment sales, stuff like that. Um, I've had a video, oh, five, six months ago or so, I had a guy give me shit, calling me a hypocrite, saying, you just got done making a video about how you don't want to see small farms going under and shit like that, and then you're talking about going around buying cheap equipment at farm auctions because guys are going out of business. I was like, no. There's farm auctions in good years, there's farm auctions in bad years. Some things never change. Guys are still going to buy and sell equipment. Only thing that changes is how much money guys are willing to give for it. So, I can't even remember, as far as auctions go, pretty much anything I bought has come from a farm auction. Um, I try to avoid collector auctions. A, because most of what you find at collector auctions is just tractors, because you don't see too many collectors. I mean, tractors are the easiest thing to haul, easiest thing to restore, easiest things to get parked for, so that's what collectors gravitate towards. You can only go to so many auctions and look at 66s and 77s and 88s and supers and three digits and all painted up and gussied up before you're like, eh. And then you go to a collector auction and you're gonna pay collector prices. Well, I wanna buy the stuff to farm with, so I'm not gonna pay collector price for a piece of farm equipment that to me isn't worth it. Not saying this, this equipment is worthless, it's just I wanna buy it to use it, not buy it to look at it. So, like I say, I can't remember the last time I went to a collector auction that would've been of any size. There's been a couple small ones that we've been to and the biggest reason we went is because we knew the people that had them. So, and the other reason that I don't like going to collector auctions is, I guess, obviously I farm with it and I guess you could kind of say I'm a collector, but if I collected anything, I mean, yeah, tractors are cool. But I'm a bigger fan of combines and implements because you go to a show and 
you can see row upon row upon row upon row of tractors all painted up and shiny and nice and to me it's just like yeah I can go home and see all this I can go home and drive all this but tractors aren't worth squat if you don't have anything to go with them I mean it, you can't run a farm with a tractor a tractor is just the power plant it's got to have a tool to make it useful so that's why I like the implements and the combines is that kind of preserves the part of history that everybody doesn't really think about because when you go to a show all you see is a tractor. And it is getting better especially with shows like Rand Tool guys will buy tractors and they want something they can go play with them with. So there are a few collectors that have some implements around but most of the time it's like they'll have some plows or a disc or something like that. So I mean I don't need another plow, I don't need another disc. So, as far as implements go, like I, that, my field cultivator, I got that from uh, one of Dennis Polk's uh, labor, can I get that a Labor Day auction? It wasn't at one of his, I'm pretty sure it was at his Labor Day auction. I remember I took the day off of school to go Anyway, that, that came from an auction. Stock Chopper came from an auction. Um, what else? There's a handful of stuff up, up there at the farm that came from an auction. Um, then Craigslist. I'm on Craigslist every night. I usually cover Michigan. I, I got cover southern Michigan, northern Indiana every night and then usually once a week I'll cover the entire state of Michigan and oh, once a month or so I'll just start poking around random states looking for stuff. Speaking of which, Craigslist. I want to, I want to mention this real quick because if I had the barn to put it in I would be on, headed north with a truck and a low boy right now to go get it. And I know I got some subscribers and some even some people that aren't subscribed just watch my videos from up north of here. Center or uh, southern, southern Michigan or southwest, yeah, southwest Michigan Craigslist. Get on there, search combine. Minneapolis Moline 3490, same as an Oliver 430. This thing looks like it has been trapped in a vacuum chamber its entire life. It's, it, I saw the pictures of it, my jaw kind of dropped. Just the paint on it still shines, tires on it are good. I wish you'd have taken a couple more pictures of it. Because there's only two or three on the ad, but he wants two thousand for it. Probably a little steep, but for the condition it's in, I'd pay it just to save the thing. Because if that combine went to scrap, I'd probably cry. Um, there aren't too many Oliver four thirties and four thirties around, let alone Moline versions of it. So. The only downside to it is the 430 and the 431 and the Moline 3490. I'm not sure there was a Moline version of the 431, but the, the, that, that series of combine was meant for a small grain machine, so it really only had a grain table on it. That one's got a 12-footer. So you can run soybeans, wheat, rye, barley, all your small grains with it. You couldn't really run corn. They made a corn head for it. Good luck finding one, though. I've only ever seen them in pictures. So, yeah, if there's anybody up there who's got a slot in the shed and a little bit of cash to play with right now, please, for the love of God, save that combine. Because, like I say, if I had, I have money right now, I just got no place to stick it. So, I'm not going to bring it home and have it sit outside. Somebody save that combine, please. Please, thank you. Do it. Anyway, off that tangent, Craigslist. This thing came off of Craigslist. We got screwed on that, but she's she's good now. Uh, Eighteen hundred came off of Craigslist. Um, that might be it for now. Seems like there was some, some other small stuff. I mean, we buy we bought some weights and stuff off Craigslist. Most of the stuff we buy off Craigslist is smaller stuff like parts. We've gotten a bunch of weights and stuff off Craigslist. Some tires. Seems like there's some, it's hard keeping track because I've drugged so much stuff home in the last seven years since I started farming that it's not funny. 
But uh, yeah, Craigslist, good place to look. Um, kind of depending on the state you're in, like especially for Oliver stuff, Oliver had pretty good following in like Pennsylvania. Um, they had a lot of crawlers sold in the northeast there, so you're gonna find a lot of cleat track stuff up like Maine, New Hampshire, New York, over in that area. Um, big following in the Midwest, huge following in Wisconsin. There is a lot of cool shit, cool Oliver shit in Wisconsin all the time. Um, Illinois and stuff in states like that. You start getting a little further west in the wheat country. Oliver had a little bit of a following, but out there you find a lot of stuff like Moline and IH and the, yeah, the companies that focused on the bigger, heavier Wheatland tractors where Oliver was pushing the row crop stuff. So you find a lot more Oliver stuff in row crop country than you do in Wheatland country. So the further west you get, a little harder it is to find. But um, So yeah, farm auctions, Craigslist, and then word of mouth. We have gotten so much shit from word of mouth. That's how I got both the combines. The 525, we were at an Oliver show. Didn't actually need to be at the show because the guy we were talking to lives right up the road from us. It was the year I started, or that winter before I started farming, we were talking to him and I was, we had heard, the guy used to have two Oliver Model 40 combines and I was looking for a combine and a Model 40 are kind of cool. One of these days I'm still going to get one, but um, I asked him about those and unfortunately he had scrapped them a long, long time ago, but he said, uh, but I do know a guy that's got an Oliver combine, and he start he thought for a minute. He's like, does uh, does a five twenty five sound like a model number? And I said, yeah. I said I wouldn't mind having one of those either. That'd be perfect, actually. So that's how I ended up with the five twenty five, the seventy three hundred, because one of the guys' dad that works at one of the companies' dad subcontracts for turned out to be Max Morley's grandson and he knew we collected Oliver so when they decided to sell off some of his equipment first thing they did was come to us so that's how I got the 7300 and all the hay equipment and my four row cultivator um, heart car came from word of mouth 1950T came from word of mouth so yeah, the more people you know, the better. You start finding a lot of shit, and all the stuff that, all the stuff like that, came from right around here. We didn't even have to look for it. Just like 1950, that came from about 15 minutes away. 525 came from about 15 minutes. Away. Man, not even that. If you're driving by car, it's about five minutes away. All that stuff though was tucked back in barns. So if it wasn't for the people we talked to, we'd never known it was around here. The 1950 we didn't know about because the guy that owned that, Dad used to work with a long time ago. So that's how that that's how that came to be here. Was he called Dad when he decided to move to Texas? So word of mouth is awesome, especially when people know that there's a certain color you like. Um, and then the other thing, and I'm I get really I got really good at it somehow. Um, you start going to shows and looking at equipment, even different brands of equipment, you just start to recognize every brand kind of had their own, sh I guess shape is the best way to put it. Like some of them out plows, you could sandblast every one of them, put a deer and Oliver and IH, all three right next to each other, I could tell you whichever, what, what every one is, don't even need to look at the paint on it. So I got really good at that and like the corn picker or the, my pull type corn picker I found just driving down the road one day. Well actually the pull type picker is a little easier because I've been driving past that since I was a little kid. Um, my two row mounted picker didn't have any, The only I found that the only thing the guy had sitting out by the road was the husking bed. And I recognized right away that it was an Oliver husking bed, so I swung in there and he had the rest of the picker. He just hadn't got it out by the road yet. Um, we picked up a lot of plow, like our Model 100 Plowmasters. We picked up 
a handful of those just driving down the road. Oh, hey, look, there's, there's a plow. Matter of fact, there's one I drive back and forth past on the way to work. I'm gonna stop one of these days. It's a two, looks like a 214 clutch lift that I wanna stop and ask about one of these days. So, like, I realize I really haven't answered a question. I've just kind of described a lot of situations, but um, like I say, if, if you want to, if all you really want to do is collect, collect your auction all day long. It's going to make your life easier. Chances are you're only going to really want to be looking at tractors because like I say, implements and stuff like that are hard to, they're easy to find, they're hard to transport. That's why most collectors don't really get into them because collectors want stuff they can show. But, like I say, I don't really have much use for collector auctions for what I want. Not saying they're a bad thing, they're not. But I don't have much use for them as far as for what I want because I don't want to pay top dollar for something. Especially where it might have a pretty paint job, but a collector's version of a restoration and my version of a restoration are generally two different things. A collector restoration, they're probably going to fix some leaks, make sure it's mechanically okay, and then do a bunch of body work, put a $5,000 paint job on it, and have a nice show piece. I don't care about a paint job. I want it to run. So I'm not going to buy a tractor that's got a pretty paint job on it and it's really ugly underneath the paint. Case in point, right behind me. I'm not doing that again. So, that's why I like going to like farm auctions and stuff like that because generally there you're going to buy them when they're work clothes. Yeah, there's going to be some ugly hiding under that you can't see, but you can look right at it and go, yeah, it needs that, and it needs that, and it needs that, and that's broke, so that might cause a problem. I mean, you, you, you work on enough of this stuff, you know what to look for. You start, you start to, uh, I mean, every, every brand has their own isms that you need to look for. And we've hauled enough of these things home. I go to an auction now and I can pretty much look at it and say, well, yeah, it's going to need this. It's probably going to need about this much money put into it. You're always going to find something. I mean, you're going to come, you're going to bring it home. You're going to work on it for two, three, four weeks straight going through it thinking you found everything and then the very first time you take it out of the field you're going to find what you didn't find the first time you went through it but eventually you do find or eventually you do actually run out of stuff to work on at least major stuff you're always going to have breakdowns even on new equipment but so that's why i like farm auctions over collector auctions that's why i don't really go to collector auctions anymore heck i don't even really I'm not going to say I don't like going to tractor shows, but I guess I'm going to say Rand Tool kind of ruined tractor shows for me. Because that's the same deal. I mean, you go to a show, got a bunch of the same tractors lined up, all nice and pretty and shiny, and they're just sitting there. You go down to a show like Rand Tool, you got your little corner with all your nice pretty shiny trailer queens and then you got 400 acres of tractors and their work clothes out making a bunch of noise and a bunch of smoke and doing what they were born to do so that's why i like i mean ran tools the only tractor show i've been to in the last four years them two ran tool shows i don't go to shows much anymore plus working don't really have time i don't even i I didn't even pull tractors last year because I didn't want to take the time off of work, but one of these days I'll get back into that. So anyway, coming back around off of the 20 tangents I've been off on, pretty much for any brand of equipment, especially if you want stuff you can farm with, Craigslist, farm auctions, auction zips, a really good website to keep an eye on. Um, for those of you that don't know, basically it's just a giant, and especially, you'll find a lot of cool stuff at small auctions. And for a lot of the smaller auction companies that kind of specialize in, like, 
say a guy's selling off some of his equipment because he's updating or something like that. You know, and a bunch of the smaller auction companies that don't really have a whole lot of capital to do a bunch of major advertising. And you got your big companies like Polk and Mankum and uh, McGrew, the ones that everybody's heard of. Um, they word of mouth and advertising and those companies people just know they're going to have auctions this date this date this date every year they don't really need to advertise anymore but then you got the smaller companies they got auction zip which basically then go on they can put their flyer and then what you can do is you can go on and search by calendar date and you can search and it's like 20 mile radius 100 mile radius 150 miles so and so and you go on there and you realize there's about there's auctions about every damn day I haven't been to any this fall because I've been busy working on other stuff and don't really need to drag any more projects home. But yeah, Auction Zip's a really good website to keep an eye on. Um, don't really use eBay a whole lot, mostly because there's not really a whole lot on there. We buy obviously parts off of there every once in a while, but it's just kind of a pain in the ass. Plus, it kind of eBay kind of takes the thrill out of staring the guy down you're bidding against. So, we we use it. It's just not that often. Um, and then, like I say, you got Polk has four or five at their lot down in, uh, um, yeah, Chipswana, or is that considered New Paris? Might be considered new pairs. Um, they have four or five just general farm equipment auctions every year. There's actually one coming up at the end of the month I'd really like to go to because they got a four row white plant or white 5100 planter with a three row splitter on it that'd make an awesome bean planter, but I got nowhere to put it, so it's pointless going. They also got a couple oddball tractors down there I wouldn't mind going to look at, but again, I got nowhere to put them, so I'm not going to go. Um, and generally, like Polk's, what their collector auction, if they have, that's generally just tractors. They'll have a few implements, generally smaller stuff, pull type plows, trip plows. Not much in the way of bigger tillage equipment, bigger vintage tillage equipment, like and by vintage, I mean like my Oliver chisel plow and stuff like that. Um, but they're that that bigger old tillage equipment like so like five six miles some amount of plows older discs like my 252 stuff like that they'll hold off and sell it their far at their like general farm equipment auction so that's the auctions i'd rather go to because in my mind that's where the cooler stuff is and you get the better deals because they also sell like almost brand new like two three year old stuff there generally the guys that go to that auction are going to be spending all their money on that new stuff so you can get really good deals on the old stuff because nobody's there for it that's how that's how i ended up with that field cultivator i was there was me and one other guy bidding on it and i think i, I only ended up paying 500 bucks for it and that was it's a nice field cultivator so yeah and then uh also, don't underestimate the value of salvage yards because that's where my chisel plow came from, and that was a complete accident. We were down there looking for parts for. What were we looking for parts for? And it's not the junkyard I got videos of. This is an actual organized salvage yard we were at. Oh, so that right down the road from that one I got video of, but I never take a video there. I want to say we were down there looking for something for this. And just for shits and giggles, I was walking up and down because they have an actual separate, like, implement section that's organized very nicely. And I was walking up and down the implement lines just looking to see what they had because I we had just got this and I needed some bigger tools for it. And I got, I was walking up and, uh, walking up a line and they had a whole bunch of three points of plows just in a big old hodgepodge. And I walked right past it, and for some, something, for some reason, I turned around and looked just right, and 
it's hard to see because part of it's covered up by a gauge wheel, but I saw the decal that said vert. They had the, they had the O, the L, and the I covered up by the gauge wheel, but I saw vert. I was like, well, son of a bitch, that's an Oliver Tizzle plow. And I'm kind of curious to know, and I doubt there's any way to prove it, the neighbor, when he first moved in, had a 3.11 shank Oliver Tizzle plow, just like that one. And he sold it. There aren't too many of them things around, and I'm wondering what the odds are, because that salvager is also kind of an equipment jockey. I'm wondering what the odds are he ended up with it and it came back home. I never have asked the neighbor about it and had him look at it to see if he recognized it, but theirs was a big ball of rust just like that one. So I'm wondering what the odds are that chisel flower went down there to that salvage yard and it came right back here. It'd be kind of cool if it did, but I have no way to prove it. So, yeah, keep an eye on salvage yards because they always got salvage yards and equipment lots because they always have new stuff coming in. Even like new farm equipment dealerships, they always have a used equipment lot. It doesn't. You can generally drive back through them. It never hurts if you got to go in and get parts or something. Just get out of the store. Just take a lap around the used equipment lot, see what they got. And we found some stuff that way too. Um. So yeah, basically to give you a rundown, word of mouth, Craigslist, farm auctions. Possibly collector auctions if you want to pay a little bit more. Or if you're looking for a tractor. It's probably what you're going to get at a collector auction. Um, salvage yards, equipment dealerships. Yeah, that. And like I say, if I collected anything, it would be combines and implements because they deserve their own little corner in history too so there aren't nearly as many people trying to save them as what uh, there as there are the tractors so generally you can pick up a lot of cool stuff really cheap because just nobody wants it so yeah I guess that's the uh, video for today I know there's a lot of rambling in there. I don't know if you want to call us an answer to a question or a story time or what, but I didn't really have anything else to video today, so I wanted to get one up, so I figured this would be a good one to do. So, yeah. Holy shit, the coyotes. They're close, too. I'm going to see if you can hear them. It's the end of the video, anyway, so let's just see if we can hear the coyotes. Actually, they might have shut up already. Yep, they're all over there. I doubt you can hear them though. We got two big herds of them. We got one that lives over there and we got one that lives back here. And we actually know where the den is back there, but anyway. So, yeah, I guess this is just a big old rambling of just me talking. So, I will shut up now. That does it for this one. We'll catch you all on the next one.